Good morning, St. Mike's Church. Good morning, uh, wider community and anyone who wants to join us for prayer this morning. You're very, very welcome to join us in prayer. Uh, we're just waiting for people to come on online. Good morning, Virginia and Moby. Quick off the mark. Hope you've got your cup of tea or coffee. The sun has just come out. Isn't it amazing? Fantastic. Hi, Adrian and Joe. Good morning, Martin. Hey, Mike. Hope you've had a good night and uh, let us know what we can be praying for during the, the course of the day, the, the things that you've got on, any challenges that you may have. Morning, Simon. Good to see you and Jane and Roz. Glad to see you've got a cup of tea ready. What we often do is, for those who happen to have a hot drink with them or a cold drink, uh, we have a simultaneous sip uh, as a, um, well, it's just fun, really, just a mark of community that we do together. Morning, Anne and uh, Ray and Leslie, and Sunny. Good morning, my friend. And Lisa and Helen and Pauline. At some point, the numbers will start getting too many and we'll have to... I <laughs> won't be able to say them all, all the names. Hi, Wendy and Ben, Hilary and Stacy. Stacy still praying for you. And Ali. So if you've got a cup of tea or coffee in hand, we love you. We'll see you soon, I hope. Hi, Dawn. I, um, I put a, a Facebook post on about this morning's uh, Lectio 365 because I just thought it was beautiful and um, I'm, no, I'm, I'm confident actually that for some of you listening here, listening this morning, whether you're watching now or later on, this, this will be really helpful and freeing for you in your prayer life. Uh, so yeah, I just thought it was a, a real rich little nugget. They're all good but today in particular. So um, let's pray. I'm just looking at uh, Helen. Please pray for my friend, Lisa. She's just lost her husband. Ah, oh, Helen. Okay, we're so sorry for your friend, Lisa. Can you pass on our love and um, tell her that we'll be praying for her and for her family? And um, I'll, so Lisa, we'll pray for her in a moment, okay? Shall we pray? As I enter prayer now, I pause to be still, to recenter my scattered senses to breathe slowly and to centre my senses upon the presence of God. Holy Spirit, I ask you, O God, present with us. I ask that you will draw close to each one listening and watching now and later. That you draw us together, not just as community, but into a deeper friendship, a deeper walk with you. As I draw near to God now, would you draw near to me? Teach me to pray. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly and follow you more nearly day by day. I choose to rejoice today in God's power, joining with the ancient praise of all God's people in Psalm 7. God is my shield, saving those whose hearts are true and right. I will thank the Lord because he is just, I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. 
Let's begin with a uh, a moment of praise if you're someone who believes in God if you're not sure what you believe just yet just be thankful and just be thankful for something this morning starting the day with gratitude COVID-19 has brought many challenges. It stretched us and stripped away some of our facades and defences. As we reflect on this passage together, let's think about God's invitation to bring our real, unvarnished selves into his presence. This is from Luke chapter 18, verse verse 9 to 14. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down upon everybody else, Jesus told them this parable. Two men, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood up at a distance. He wouldn't even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that that, this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The frank honesty of the prayer of the tax collector is disarming. There's no pretense here, he's just keeping it real. Anne Lamont, in her book entitled Help, Thanks, Wow, celebrates honesty in prayer. And she writes this. The rain's just started. My belief is that when you are telling the truth, You are close to God. If you say to God, I am exhausted and depressed beyond words and I don't like you at all right now and I recoil from most people who believe in you, that might be the most honest thing you've ever said. If you told me you had said to God, it's all hopeless and I don't have a clue if you exist, but I could use a hand. It would almost bring tears to my eyes, tears of pride in you, for the courage to get real, really real. Are my prayers, are your prayers, characterised by ritual or relationship? And just to expand that, I don't just mean ritual as in Uh, kind of liturgical prayers because they they can be wonderful Um, I just mean are we just doing it out of habit and rote it's it's become ritual where whatever kind of church you come from uh, from the really charismatic to really more Catholic or or contemplative any church we become part of our prayers can become ritualized and unthought through and not necessarily real Let's pray. God, I ask that you help me to lay aside my formulas and facades and meet you face to face as a friend. In the quiet, I come before you now and I summon the courage to say something real and true. I encourage you to articulate your prayers if you're not with other people or you don't mind what they think. Just speak it out loud. Be real and and if that if you're in a good place with God, be real and thankful. If you're struggling, be real. I think of the story of the Garden of Eden. 
God has come to walk with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day, but they're hiding. Where are you? He asks. Do you know what? That has always been uh, one of my f- one of my favourite passages. I get quite emotional when I think about it because it seems to me that it's the it's the call of all Scripture. Where are you? God wanting relationship with us. I pray, we pray for all those who are hiding their true selves from you, God. Whether it's out of fear or shame or the desire to put their best foot forward. Would you help us come out of hiding? As I return to the passage, I open my ears again to hear, really hear your word and my heart to yield to your will once again. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down upon everybody else, Jesus told them this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He wouldn't even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. In the book How to Pray, Pete Gregg writes, I love this, the truly remarkable thing about the rude, irreverent, self-pitying prayers recorded in the Bible is not that they prayed them in the first place, but that they were never redacted, they were never taken out from the text. These outrageous prayers were prayed by a litany, a list of anti-heroes capable of arch-narcissism, crass stupidity, and the very heights of nobility too. A bit like me and you. God, I thank you that I don't have to be a superhero to please you in prayer. Thanks that you take me just as I am with my faults and foibles. I yield myself to your acceptance and kindness and I give myself to you today. God, I thank you for your promise in Psalm 139 that you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. You see me as I am and you love me. God sees you as you are and he loves you. There's no qualification. There's nothing you have to do for God to love you. He just does. I mean, it's as we draw close to him and as we're real with him, then if there's a process of transformation needed, and there is, there is with me, it's in his presence that he, his spirit transforms us. As we draw close to Jesus, we become more like him. 
as we grow closer to the Father, we take on his attributes. It's wonderful, isn't it? Now we're going to um, close in a moment, but let's just pray for those who have asked specifically for prayer. Um, we're going to pray for uh, Lisa, who recently lost her husband very sadly. And I'm just going to look through the messages. Um, and for Sandra, your daughter, Carla, because she's poorly. And for Trish, uh, who's angry with God because she's lost her husband. Father, we pray for, uh, for Trish. We pray for Lisa, two different ladies, different families who have lost their husbands and we don't know the circumstances. But we pray as a community together that you will walk alongside them, that you, one of your names is that you're the spirit, the comforter, the one who comes alongside, that you'll come alongside them and comfort them in their grief, give them hope, bring them peace, Help them to be real with you and with others about their loss and put people around them who can love them and, and be and bring and speak about the love of Christ to them. We pray for Carla, Sandra's, Sandra's daughter, and we ask for healing for her. And all those, Father, that we love today, we name them before you now and we ask that you draw close to them those who are anxious, they will know you with them. Those in need of healing will know your strength. Those who are doing well and flourishing, that you will bless them further. And so just spend a moment, think about the day that you've got ahead. Uh, if you know what's going to be happening, it might just be at home. It might be that you've got appointments or things online, uh, going shopping. And just give it to God and ask him to walk with you, that you may be conscious of his presence, of his wisdom, of his guidance, of his patience if you need it. Father, help me to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. Amen. Amen. If, if what I've, um, we've been reading together has raised any issues for you or there's things that you want to pray through more um, or you've got questions, please do let us know. Don't just um, either be upset or wondering what to do with something or wanting to pray and not let either someone that you know on, who's been watching today uh, get in touch with them and um, if you know and trust them. Or by, by all means, drop me a, uh, an email, vicar at stmags.org.uk, um, or ring the office number, which is 01803 211 868. Uh, or if there's practical needs that you've got that you're struggling to, to have met, uh, then again, let us know, because there's people who have volunteered and they're willing to, to help uh, in a socially distant, appropriate kind of way. Uh, otherwise, have a really good day. And we'll see you, yeah, I think it's me tonight. I'll see you this evening.